status is on. We are re recorded, we are being live streamed. We will be using, we may be using clips for PR purposes. So if you do not wish to, that to happen, please switch off your cameras. Otherwise, just let's go and have some fun today. I'm so excited. We've got lots of things going on, but oh no, I think it's raining cats and dogs. Well, <laughs> we're going to ask Antonio about that in a minute. In the meantime, let me welcome, uh, let me welcome you as the uh, president of this club. It gives me great pleasure to actually say that we've had a couple of um, announcements for you. First of all, Next time, in two weeks' time today, we have a webinar contest. What is that? Well, tune in and find out. If you're an existing Toastmaster and you want to actually take a role as a counter, as a judge, or as a something else, then let Pam know, okay? So, Pam Rowley. Now, webinar contest, two weeks' time. Also, a month after that, we have World Earth Day, April the 25th. Make a note of it or look on the website. If somebody can put the details of our website into the chat for me, I will be forever grateful. We have wonderful speakers today. We have a fantastic, fantastic table topic session. And of course, lots of lovely evaluators. In the meantime, let's give it up for our producer, Julian, who's on the dials today. He is the one responsible for sending us all over the stratosphere and the internet today. Well done, Julian. Great job. Now, the lady of the hour, the woman who's going to run this show, please give it up for Toastmaster of the Day, the wonderful, the inimitable, the diligent, DTM, Antonia Harrison. Thank you very much, President Nick, and good evening, everybody. Good evening, fellow Toastmasters and very welcome guests. I'm so delighted that you've come along and you've brought your cats and dogs with you. Some in person, I think, with Deck, I'm not quite sure, <laughs> and some virtually, and some might actually visit us during the evening. My dog might visit if, he, if she wants to pop out, and you'll have to excuse me if that happens, because... Those of you who are cats and dogs, I've also had any dogs owners, will know that the dog rules the house. What the dog says goes. It is the way it is. I am delighted to welcome you to this meeting. And uh, if you don't like cats and dogs, well, you're still in the right place because this is Digital Communicators and we embrace everybody. We just love digital tools. And we're going to show you some digital tools during this meeting. So don't worry if you don't like cats and dogs. Perhaps by the end of the evening, you will anyway. You're guaranteed some fun. So that's the most important part. And you are bound to learn something. Perhaps a fact. Perhaps a new skill. And certainly make a new friend. So don't worry. It's going to be great. Now, let me have a look. We've got some people going to help us tonight. We have our timekeeper, Amparo. Amparo, first of all, before you tell us about timekeeper, can you remind us how to say cats and dogs in Spanish? And don't forget to unmute before you do. Good evening, everyone. You might hear the background dogs. Excuse the noise. Uh, cat, in Spanish is gatos y perros. Gatos y perros. So can I introduce myself? Please my, do. My name is Amparo. You may wonder why I am a Toastmaster as well. A good friend of mine, a fellow Toastmaster, and a friend of mine said to me, Amparo, you have so much to say. Why don't you join Toastmasters? I just ignored her comments. So... But one day on the way down to London, I was with her and we bumped into a really nice, good-looking Toastmaster. And he was superlatively sassy orator, and I was totally convinced. So I joined Toastmasters Harrowians for seven years now. But my friend couldn't, couldn't stop at that, so she introduced me to digital communicators. And would you believe it, I was 
taken aback, I decided to join immediately because this club is full of superlative sassy orators and troopers. And the most fantastic one, who I don't think is here tonight, is Andrew Bennett. I definitely love this club. So I'm here today to be your timekeeper, to watch out for the time for each speaker. And each one will be different speakers. Speeches will be five to seven minutes. So our five minutes will be with the slides in the background. Please remember to pin the speaker. You will see slides in the background. First of all, with the green, when you have spoken enough, can you see my, okay. And let me show you these slides, the backgrounds. I will put the, the green card when you have spoken enough, the speed, and the yellow when you uh, need to start to get ready to stop. And then red when you have spoken that you should think about stopping. In the speeches is five, six, and seven minutes. In the table topics is it's one minute, one and a half, and two minutes, I believe. Is that so? Please. I will be taking note of your timings and reporting back to you. Thank you. Perfecto. Muchas gracias. We applause people. Why do we do that? Because it takes guts sometimes to put yourself forward, put yourself on the stage, even in the virtual stage. So at Toastmasters, we'd like to applaud people. The next person. Now, may I just say, if you speak another language and you can tell us how to say cats and dogs in another language, then please do, we'd like to hear it. Our next person who's going to be helping tonight is Grammarian. Colette, could you tell us about your role? Thank you, Madam Toastmaster Antonia Harrison, fellow Toastmasters and very welcome guests. I'm from Ireland and in Ireland, dogs and cats are called Madra Agus Kati. Tonight's word of the day is sassy and sassy means lively, bold, full of spirit or cheeky. And it reminds me of Flossie. This is the photo of our family pet. And Flossie acts very sassy when she's barking at other dogs, but quickly scoots in behind your legs because she's really a scaredy cat. <laughs> Tonight, as grammarian, I'll be looking out for some really nice usage of language and focusing on the positive. And please use the word of the day, sassy. Back to you, Madam Toastmaster. Thank you very much, Colette. Modra, sass, sassy modra. I've forgotten the other word, but modra anyway. I'll learn your language one day. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Moving on, we have something really interesting, and I believe it's going to be fun as well now. We have Pam Rowley is going to give us tech tips. Listen up to Pam. Thank you, Antonia. So tonight I want to introduce you to Kahoot. You may have used it, you may have not. I'm going to tell you how to use it, how to make a Kahoot, and then we're going to have a little short game. So first of all, Kahoot is, it's free, it's game-based, and it's a really good learning platform, whether you're teaching something new, whether you're teaching students, whether you want to play quizzes with the family. I use it for in work for teaching students. Like we've done hen parties on this, we've done baby showers, I've done all sorts on it. Before we go any further, if you haven't downloaded the app, have a quick look now. You can get it on the App Store or on Google Play. If you go into your App Store and look for Kahoot, you will see something like this. It will ask you a couple of questions. It might say whether you're a student or a tutor. It doesn't matter which one you join, but just click student for now. It'll then ask you for a game pin, which I will give you shortly. So I'm going to tell you, first of all, how to make your own Kahoot. It's really simple. You go to kahoot.com and it'll ask you to either log in if you've already got an account or to sign up for the first time. And all you need for that is your email address and a password. The first screen you see will look like this. And there's a button at the top that asks you to create a Kahoot. When you click on create, you'll see this screen. This is one of the types of questions you can ask. So you can put your question at the top, you can put a picture in to match it, and then you can put in three wrong answers and one right answer. So that's one way of asking questions, or you can do a true or false. It prompts you all the way through 
to tick the right answers. When you save your, your quiz, if you haven't put right answers in, it will prompt you for that as well. So you really can't go wrong with this. The only thing I would say is make sure you click the save button. That's the one thing it doesn't do automatically. So it'll prompt you all the way through about your pictures and about your questions, but it doesn't prompt you to save. I found that out the hard way. Once you've made your presentation, you simply click on start and you'll see this screen. And when you see that, it loads the game pin and that's what you give your players to join on their tablet, phone, or however they're joining, which is what I'm going to give you shortly. I'll give you a game pin to join. So you'll see this screen and it says that you're waiting for players. And as people join, their names will start popping up on the screen. And it's as simple as that. So I'm going to give you 30 seconds to go to the app if you haven't already, get it downloaded, and I'm going to give you a game pin. So here's the pin I want you to put in on your phones. And I'm going to show you that on the Kahoot screen as well. So then you know what it looks like when you make your own Kahoot. So I'll go into Kahoot now. Bridget's already in. Names will pop up as you join. Kay's in. So it's 256-5430. Pam, I'm on the web app. I can't see where else I'm supposed to go. On the web app, you'd have to minimize your Zoom screen to play on the web app. Colette's in. OG's in. 10 seconds to join. If you're struggling to join, shout out. If you're just going to watch, that's fine. I've only got six little questions just to give you an idea of how it works. I'm going to start the game. So it's a quiz about cats and dogs. It had to be. Okay, first question, an easy one. Do you like dogs? And once everybody answered the question and it's counted down, it brings it up. Oh, we've got two no's. We'll see if we can change that tonight. And the fastest finger first was Colette. So you can make it fun and exciting if you're doing this with students. How many muscles does it take to move a dog's ear? Did anyone get that right? Oh, one person got that right with 18. And it'll tell us on the next screen who that was. And it could have been OG. Well done, OG. You're now in the lead. How many hours a day do cats spend sleeping? A few good guesses there. It is 14 to 16 hours. And we've still got OG in the lead. Who can knock her off the top spot? Two questions to go. All puppies are born with blue eyes. Is that true or false? Oh, a mixed bag there. It is actually true. Their eyes go dark at around 14 days. And Bridget's now in the lead. Let's see if anyone can beat her. What speed can greyhounds run at? Oh, and a bit of a mix there as well. Only one person got that right at 45 miles per hour. I think I'm a greyhound in disguise. Oh, and Kay's there now on fire, top of the leaderboard. Here's your last question, last chance to pull it round. How much of a cat's waking time does it spend grooming itself? Oh, did anyone get that right? One person got that right. It's actually 30% of its waking time. So I'm going to quickly whiz past this bit because we're in out time. But when you do this, you get the winner's podium. So we can see OG was in third place, Bridget in second place. But our winner tonight is, drum roll. Okay, well done. I'm presuming that might be Kumar. 
And that, everybody, is my very quick, fast introduction to Cahoots. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much, Pan. Wasn't that great? We've all learned a new tool and we probably learned something about cats and dogs. I heard a question on, oh, it was a woman who took part in the chase and she wanted to raise some money to buy new sofas because her greyhound had sat down a bit too hard and put its legs through the sofa and completely ruined it. So you might understand. Okay, fantastic. All right, we're gonna move on to speakers now. And our first speaker tonight is a guest speaker who I've invited along, my fellow club member over at Blarney in Ireland. And Moira O'Brien, DTM, is a member of Blarney and online orators. And she has a wonderful speech tonight called, Do You Speak Dog? I wonder what it's about. I happen to know that Moira has, it's a couple of dogs, isn't it, Moira? It's now only one, I'm afraid. Oh, one. We lost uh, the other dog a couple of weeks ago. Oh, no. Oh, no, that's very sad. Okay, so Moira with Do You Speak Dog? And Moira will be evaluated tonight by Kavita Dulai. So over to you, Moira. Oh, there you are. I thought I smelled something. What? Didn't you know that dogs have a highly developed sense of smell? Madam Postmaster and fellow canines, let me introduce myself. To those of you who haven't met me yet, my name is Pedro. I am what you humans call a crossbreed. I've no idea why they say that. <clears throat> After all, we don't refer to humans as coming from a breed. Well, maybe we do sometimes. Mm. He's from Barcelona. Oh, well, my ma came from a place in Canada called Labrador, which is in the province of Newfoundland. That's a funny name, isn't it? Newfoundland. Do you think they lost it or something? Anyway, that's where Mima came from, and she was a real softy. I mean, they invented the word softy especially to describe her. Sassy, maybe. <clears throat> My dad, on the other hand, he was a hard one. He came from a place in England called Staffordshire. Now, I'm not sure exactly where it is, but it's full of very hard dogs who love to fight. <clears throat> anyway. Somehow or another, they met up in Cork in a town called Yule, where I was born. Now, I'm not too sure what happened, as I was quite young at the time, but I ended up living on the street for an awful long time. My pack leader, Moira, tells me that it was three weeks, but to me, it seemed like three years. I got very hungry and very thirsty. So hungry, in fact, that I could have eaten the proverbial horse. Oh, a small horse, of course. After what seemed like years, I was kidnapped by a human who called herself a dog. But she did explain that she was actually from Dog Animal Welfare Group. Dog, get it? And she took me to her home where there were a huge number of lost souls like me. But I was so hungry and thirsty that I paid them little attention. I was too busy eating everything in sight. Then Moira came along and said that I could come to live with her. I had no idea what I was letting myself in for, but I didn't have a lot of choice. Well, you don't when you have a piece of rope around your neck, throttling every time you try to tell the human that you want to run ahead or go behind or investigate that very interesting smell coming from that bush over there. You see, you humans don't understand that we dogs don't communicate the way you do. We have our own language. You like to talk, but we like 
to hear and to smell. When I go roaming in the countryside, I'm not doing it for the good of my health. Oh no, I'm keeping up to date by reading the newspapers. I know exactly what's going on in my neighborhood. Who is on heat? Who was here last? Who is new? Just by reading the smells. I know that to you humans, when I sniff the posterior of that rather dishy blonde down the road, you think that this is disgusting behavior, but you don't understand that I need to imprint her on my brain so that when I read the p-mails, I know that it's her. You see, smell is all important. You call me a smelly dog, but you don't realize how much you stink to me. Humans have a very particular odor, but at least it helps me distinguish one of you from another. My other great asset, of course, is my hearing. I can hear sounds that no human can ever hope to hear, and much quieter sounds at that. For example, I can hear the postboy coming from a long way away. And I let you know that he's coming so you can be ready to repel borders if necessary. And I keep our property secure by telling every passerby that this is our house and our garden. Hmm. There There's no monkeying about here, I can tell you. I do all this hard work, and what do I get in return? The same food every day. A grudging walk, most of it on the lead, because she says I don't have any road sense. Of course I have road sense. When I hear a car coming, I stand in the middle of the road to stop the car in case it hits you. And all you can do is to drag me to the side of the road as if I don't know what I'm doing. They say that it's a dog's life, but they really don't understand. They think that we have it easy. And yes, we don't need a lot in life. We like to run, we like to eat, and we like to sleep. But what they do not understand is that keeping you and your property safe is actually a full-time job. Even when we are asleep, we have one eye open and one ear open so we can react instantly to keep you safe. Well, at the end of the day, it is all worthwhile because I get prime position in front of the stove every night. And I can sleep knowing that I've done a really good job keeping Moira and her property safe. And after 11 years, I think she's at last learned how to speak dog. Well, my dialect anyway. Do you speak dog? Thank you very much, Moira. Lovely speech. My little Layla behind me is also a rescue dog. My son wanted a dog for years and years and years and years, and I kept saying no. And after his GCSEs, I finally said he could have a dog. And we went to every rescue home we could find, and none of the dogs were right. And then we walked into one, and there was this little dog in the corner, and it was love at first sight. And Layla's been with us for four years. And I have to say, when she came to us, I was not a dog lover at all. I started off with, that dog's not coming near me. That dog is not coming in my bedroom. I'm not paying for any of it. You've got to pay for all of its costs and everything. And guess what? The dog goes everywhere. The dog has three beds in the living room. It has three double beds upstairs. And the dog goes everywhere she wants. Because that's a dog's life. But she's absolutely lovely and she's united our family so if you don't like dogs you never know you might one day so thank you very much moira i hope you all enjoyed that speech i saw bridget laughing her head off anyway <laughs> okay so our next speaker tonight is rinku saha now rinku is doing something really quite clever she's doing 
two impromptu speeches in one. This is from the Engaging Humour Pass uh, Level 4, The Power of Humour in an Impromptu Speech. What she has, has to do here is she's given me four subjects and I have the power to choose two of the four subjects for her to speak about. Now, let me think. Of the four, the, pe the two subjects that I want to hear about are the people in your life and I don't want to hear about your work. So I want to hear about your savings during pandemic. So Rinku, your speech, your impromptu speech, two speeches in one, will be evaluated by April soon. And we're really looking forward to it. Rinku Saha. Thank you, Toastmaster of the Day, Antonia Harrison. Let me start with my savings during pandemic. March 2020, pandemic, social distancing, wear mask. What is this? Is it a life? Or I'm in jail? No, no, no. I can't take this. I started complaining. Mom, what is happening? I can't even meet my friends in pandemic and I have to wear mask. People hardly can see my beautiful face. Thanks to Zoom, at least you can see me. But if you want to see me in person, no way around. I, my half of my face is covered with mask. But end of each month, when I look at my bank account, I see a big difference. I got lots of savings. But how is it possible? <laughs> Boring life, but savings is way too much, which I didn't even imagine. Wait a second, where is this savings coming from? If I wear a mask, I don't need to buy lipstick. If I wear a mask, I don't need to put makeup. Come on, I'm a lady, and you know how much we spend on our makeup, lipstick, foundation. Oh, big deal. I started liking this pandemic in a way. So no more complain. And my savings, way too much. You can't even imagine. I started with one Toastmaster club, and now I'm a member of five Toastmasters club. You know, how is it possible? Pandemic rocks and Zoom. No, 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 no. Back to you, Toastmaster of the Day, Antonia. Okay, and now the second speech, I immediately start. Yes, people in my life. People call me crazy, but I wholeheartedly welcome 17 of you on the screen to my home and you see why am I crazy or am I the craziest one? Let me start with my husband. Come on, forget about my husband, who cares? If he's not around, I still feel very single. Now coming to my son, my 10 years old son, so busy, so busy, extremely busy. Why? Playing video game all day long. My daughter, six years old, for sure, she will be a yoga teacher. The way she rip off the yoga mat every day, doing cartwheel and yoga poses and giving me lectures, mama, your tummy is getting bigger, do something. Yoga teacher for sure granted. Now coming to our extended family member, our nanny who is coming from all the way from Philippines. In 2016, me and my husband decided to bring a nanny from Philippines because we love Filipino food. But little did I know she had short-term memory loss. How? We love Filipino food and we know it's not spicy. 
because being Indian, though we are Indians, but we don't eat spicy. So I just, in a friendly way, sat her down and asked, Joy, her name is Joy. Joy, I hope we can have some good, delicious Filipino food every day and no spicy, obviously no need to mention. That's why we chose you. She looked at me, excuse me, ma'am. I chose you assuming that I, I'm going to have spicy food. Expectation hurts. But in this way, that she chose us thinking she would be having spicy food and we chose her thinking that we will have no spicy food. And then I try to make it clear. Okay, if you like spicy food, one chili in one dish every day. No problem, ma'am. Only one chili, I would add. <laughs> Little did I know the next day she served a dish, it was not spicy. It was horribly spicy. And I asked, what did you put? One chili. But at a time, because she has short-term memory loss, she add one chili in our food, immediately she forgets. Next thing, another chili at a time. And she forgets. And now we are getting used to spicy food. Back to you, Toastmaster of the day. That's lovely. Thank you very much, Rinku. Very good. Right, now if you look at your agenda, you'll see it says speakers three open. We actually started today with four speakers on the agenda, but we are very busy people. And two of our speakers, had to pull out just before the meeting start due to work. I know, it's shocking, isn't it? Work should not be allowed to infringe upon our meeting. But there you are. So we are adaptable as well. Not only are we digital, we are adaptable. So don't worry, we have plans. We have backup plans. One of them involves Pam and the other one involves Julian. If Julian is able to do what we agreed, and I'm sure he will because he's a very capable person. So don't worry about that at all. Now, Ampi, could we please have the times of the two speakers? Hello. The times of the, the two speakers. I did time the, the Pam Rowley was 6.15 minutes. Mora was 6.33, and then Rinku was 5.48. Lovely, thank you very much. Okay. For the table topics, MP, I'm going to ask you if you would please just write the times in the chat. That will save us a bit of time in the meeting, okay? Right, so lovely. So now we are going to move on to table topics, which tonight are led by our dog maniac, Pam Rowley. So I wonder what the subject will be. Over to Pam. Quite possibly dogs and maybe a little bit of cats in there. So can I just remind everyone with the table topics that we do our shotgun evaluation. So that means at the end of each table topic, any of you could be called upon to do a quick one minute evaluation. So my first one, we heard earlier that it takes 18 muscles to move a dog's ear. Now, I used muscles this weekend that I forgot I had when I went for a walk on the beach and decided to go into the sand dunes and get lost. And it took me about an hour and a half to get back onto the beach. I could barely move yesterday for my legs. But what I want to know, Deck, when did you last use muscles that you didn't know you had? Deck, when did you last use muscles that you didn't know you had? Three minutes ago, I stupidly decided that I was going to keep very, very up to date with my 
emails. Now that means sitting down a lot. I was sitting down a lot and sitting down a lot and sitting down a lot. And so that means I was doing something very strange. I was using muscles in my bottom, in my back, and in my legs that I haven't used for years. I have been aching and aching. Have you ever ached? Antonia, have you ever ached? Rinku, have you ever ached? Julian, I'm sure you've ached because you sit down a lot doing emails. I'm very, very lucky. I have got an appointment booked with my chiropractor. I love my chiropractor. He's a gorgeous man. He's a wonderful man. He's a terrific man. He loves me to death. And he's one of those guys. He's one of those guys who doesn't do the old thing of mm, 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 mm. Mm, no, he doesn't. He does the incredible, not laying hands on, but they're about an inch or so above my back and above my bottom and above my legs and my toes. And he does that lovely thing and then goes, <laughs> don't know what that's all about. Haven't a clue. But what he is going to do on Thursday is to make sure that the muscles that I have used, which I haven't used for years, my answering all my emails muscles, will be lovely and supple and sinuous and gorgeous. And they're going to cause me no problem at all in the future or in the present. Or at any time, really, because I am going to be wonderfully subtle and able to use them if I want to answer e more emails. But there we have it. They are the muscles which I have used, which I have never used for years and years and years and years and years. Madam Topics Chair. Thank you, Dex. I feel for the pain. Collect, would you like to give a shotgun evaluation of Dex's table topic? Thank you very much, Madam Topics Master Pam Rowley. Dex, I really enjoyed your table topic. I liked the way you presented yourself on screen. You stood up to give us your answer and you used a great number of gestures, which really enhanced your mini speech. What you talked about was that how you used muscles that you hadn't been using in quite some time, sending your emails. Now, Deck, I know that's not true because you are always answering your emails. If I could recommend one thing to you, Deck, it would be this. You just nearly got an alliteration in. You talked about supple, sinuous and gorgeous. If you had had another S word there, it would have just really rounded off to make a good table topic, a great table topic. But overall, your structure, your diction, your screen presence, your apply, excellent, very well done. Thank you, Colette. Now we heard earlier that a cat likes to sleep for about 18 hours a day. Now I'm the sort of person that can survive on four or five hours sleep for about three weeks, then I have to do about 12 to 14 hours sleep. But what I want to know, Rinku, what kind of sleeper are you? Rinku, what kind of sleeper are you? I'm the cat in my home because I love to sleep. My whole family complains. Did you come to this world just to sleep? Yes, perhaps I did. I'm a sleep lover. I can sleep anytime, anywhere. Right now, sitting on this chair, I can believe me, I can sleep. 
I can just turn off the camera and mute everything and goes to sleep. Why not, ladies and gentlemen? The thing is, my dad always says that those who receive, they, they get things, but those who are givers, they sleep well. I think uh, in my day-to-day -day life, whatever I'm supposed to do and whatever my purpose is, I serve my purpose in every bit of life. So for me, I can sleep anywhere, anytime, and there is no question about it. So people can complain, it's their problem. If my family members are complaining about my sleep, it's their problem. But for me, I do what I enjoy. Back to you, Pam. Thank you, Rinku. I love that. You just sleep whenever you want. OG, could you do an evaluation on Rinku's table topic, please? Of course, Rinku. I love the way you started with the meow. You definitely got our attention. And I love the way you likened your sleep with the length of that of a cat. And you know what he reminded me of? What Napoleon Bonaparte said. He said, let her sleep. For when she wakes, she will change the world. And that's what you're doing, isn't it? Taking your time to sleep, to rest, to be at peace. And so when you wake up, voila, here you are, ready to change the world. Sleep some more, my darling. The world needs the services that only you can provide. Meow, meow, take it away. Thank you, OG. So again, we heard earlier that puppies are born with blue eyes, as are babies. By around two weeks, most dogs' eyes have gone brown. I think that's why I like the colour brown. I love brown eyes. But what I want to know, Julian, what's your favourite eye colour and why? Julian, what's your favourite eye colour and why? Dear fellow Toastmasters, and most welcome guests. What is my favorite eye color and why? That's a really good question because I have honey-like eyes, but my kid has blue eyes. So what is the favorite color? I would say that we always like what we don't have because we think it's exotic because we don't have it and we want it, but once we have it, the new feeling waves in no time. So let me say that I still have brown eyes and my kids still have blue eyes. And every time I look at him, I have to say that I prefer blue eyes. That's the reason why with the mother, otherwise I would not be with her. Anyway, that's my answer. Thank you very much. Thank you, Julian. See, I have blue eyes and I want brown eyes. It's not fair, is it? Moira, would you like to do an evaluation of Julian's table topic, please? Moira. Thank you. Well done. Julian is an accomplished speaker. For somebody who's... Uh, language is not his first language i'm always impressed by the ability of people such as yourself julian that you're able to string not just string two words together but string them together in an intelligent and interesting manner i think you answered the question i don't really have any major comments to make except possibly to ask you to slow down just a little bit. For us who are unfortunate not to have been born uh, in Spain, we uh, may struggle a little bit with the accent. And I think slowing down would make it just that a little bit easier to be able to follow you better. But having said that, uh, it was a good response. I enjoyed it and I can't say anything more. Thank you, Julian. Thank you, Moira. So we heard earlier in the quiz that greyhounds can run at 45 miles an hour. 
An average dog runs at about 30 miles an hour, but a sloth only moves at one mile an hour. What I want to know, Pamela Benjamin, are you a sloth or are you a greyhound? Pamela Benjamin. I don't think I'm either. I see hounds running on the outside in the morning and they look about like that. And it is a thing of beauty, the way they can stretch their legs out and just move and just, they just quickly just fly. What takes me 10 minutes, they can do in probably about two minutes, two to three minutes. So I absolutely love to watch them. I wouldn't say I'm a slow, uh, I wouldn't say I'm real slow, but I feel real slow compared to those dogs. But when they're running, I, it, uh, it really takes my breath away. I would love to be able to, uh, move with that sort of agility and that sort of passion. Um, their owner, their owner that is with them every single morning, he has two of them and they're hunting dogs. They're hunting hounds and uh, they really, they're a really lot of fun because we, we run on a hill on, on this big ridge and the two dogs come in out and they're just zigzagging in front of him all the time while he's running and he's a fast runner himself. So I absolutely love watching him and those dogs run. I wish, and even more, I wish I could keep up with those dogs because they're so pretty and I could wish I could keep up with that owner, but I'm not a sloth, but I sure would like to be a hound or at least keep up with a hound. Me too, Pamela. The amount of times I've had dogs off the lead and now I know why I can't catch them because I am the ultimate sloth. Kavita, would you like to evaluate Pamela's table topic, please? Thank you. Uh, thank you, Pamela, for th that um, answer. I think it's quite a difficult one and I think you answered it really well. You were given a choice. Am I, um, do, am I a greyhound or a sloth? So, so what you did was to answer that question, you cleverly took us to, which I think you did really well, to, to, to that hill where you actually watch um, these greyhounds run around. So you, you, took, you drew us in into that. So in terms of recommendations, I, I, just, just a twist, because sometimes I get stuck with table topics. You could actually make the whole thing up <laughs> because I felt like, you were so into the greyhound, you knew how maybe those greyhounds ran and you knew what, um, you, you felt the speed, you felt what, what, what the whole thing was about. So you could suddenly just make the whole thing up and say, I'm just like that greyhound. I do this and I do that. Just, just, just make it all up. And I think that's something we sometimes you all fail to do in table topics because it doesn't have to be completely truthful, does it? But uh, thank you very much, um, Pamela. I really did. I really did enjoy that because I was there with the greyhounds with you. Thank you. Thank you, Kavita. I think Pamela was being modest. I think she's a greyhound. I think I've so too. <laughs> so we also heard that cats spend thirty percent of their waking time grooming. Considering they're asleep for about eighteen hours, this means they spend almost two hours a day grooming or getting ready to go out. What I want to know, Bridget, how long does it take you to get ready to go out? Bridget, how long does it take you to get ready to go out? So I'll be honest, it used to take me like an hour to an hour and a half. And I used to drive my parents crazy because I would start getting ready and it would just take me so long. But I think a lot of that comes from just that lack of confidence and even though I am a lot older and a lot heavier than I was, I would say I can get ready in about 15 to 20 minutes now. I have mastered the art of curly hair and this little clip certainly helps because, you know, don't have to really do anything. I can throw my makeup on really quickly and I've actually kind of thinned out my wardrobe so that there's fewer things for me to choose from and was able to donate a bunch of clothes to people who probably had more use for them, especially with COVID. And I've really turned that getting ready time around. I have to say it is so much nicer to be able to just like, boom, get ready and go out the door. I feel like I have given myself back a lot of time. Thank you, Bridget. I'm impressed. I need to work on my getting ready skills. Rinko, would you like to evaluate Bridget's table topic, please? Oh. 
Sure. When, it, when we connect with our personal stories, we immediately get attention by the audience. And that's exactly what she did today on the topic given to her. Well done, congratulations. And you started with your past, how your parents used to get annoyed with you and how you overcome that challenge and you gain all courage and confidence and you shared the stories. You are very open to everyone, each one of us. Well done. And that transparency makes you unique. Keep it up. Yes, a little bit dash of humor because today the environment, the, the environment we all, most of the speaker we have created, I think humor, little dash of humor could have been taken, uh, blown away uh, uh, your topic. So, uh, well done, you, you connected with your personal stories, you talk about your flaws and you gain confidence and um, now you have been doing great within 10, 15 minutes, you are, you are good to go. You showed us a, a practice, how you do your stuff. So you, in a in few minutes of time, even if you manage to teach us how we can groom ourselves, good job done. Little dash of humor and it would be rocking. Back to you, Pam. Thank you, Rinku. Now I've worked in vets, I've worked in pet shops, I've worked in kennels, I work as a dog groomer. Every animal I work with, I think you've got a great life. I'd love to be you. But what I want to know, Kumar, if you could be an animal, which animal would it be? Kumar, if you could be an animal, which one would it be? Wow, that's a good start for me then. So if I were to be an animal, I would pick myself as a tiger somewhere down the lines in, in India, the good jungles out there, the hills out there, be in the jungle, relax. Like the cat, I like to also sleep long, enjoy my sleep. That's about me, the tiger here. Thank you, back to you. Thank you, Kumar. Julian, could I ask you to evaluate Kumar's table topic? Kumar, congratulations. You stood in front of a crowd of strangers and you did a very good job. You came across quite confident, in part because I think you have already thought about this question. And when you started speaking, I say, he's going to choose a tiger. And then you say, tiger. I say, yes, of course. I don't know. You have that feeling look in your eyes. Maybe it's that. I don't know. What I would recommend you to do is to sweat a bit more, to struggle in front of the camera a bit more and try to speak for two minutes. I know it's your first time. Um, you might not be confident or comfortable enough to speak for two minutes, but you now know. Try to use up all the allotted time for you, two minutes, because then when you hit the one minute mark, you will start struggling and say, oh my God, okay, I want to be a tiger, but why? And that will be something that would have been really nice to know. Why are you so identified as a tiger despite being Indian? It must be something else, something personal, maybe an encounter with a tiger when you were a kid. Who knows? Thank you, Julian. Now, the biggest dog show in the world has just taken place. It ran over four days and finished last night. 20, over 20,000 dogs took place. What I want to know is, April, did you watch this? And if you did, what breed of dog would you be? So April, what breed of dog would you be? Thank you, Madam Table Topics Master, fellow Toastmasters. Did I watch, was it the Westminster Kennel Club? Was that the show? I missed it. Oh my God. I love to watch it every year. They have small dogs, toys. They have working dogs. They have really, really big dogs. 
the dog that I admired the most and the dog that I think I would like to be, because that's the question, is a Papillon. Years ago, I watched the Westminster Kennel Club show over four days and the Papillon won. It was small enough to fit in the trophy that it won. And the little guy knew everybody was taking pictures of him. He posed. They have such fantastic personalities. It was smart. It pranced. It posed for the photographers. It knew that it had won and gone to the finals. And of course, they have them prancing around again. I love watching. It's almost like a dog parade. Over and over, a dog beauty show. It's really hard to compare all those different types of dogs. But yeah, I'd want to be smart. I'd want to be, have a personality as big as I'll get out like that Papillon. I would like to pose in a trophy that I won at the Westminster Kennel Club. I can't believe I missed it. Back to you, Madam Table Topic Master. Thank you, April. You'll have to get it on catch up. I love the Papillon and it gets its name from its butterfly like ears. Just a little bit of trivia there for you. So Antonia, I know you're busy, but could you please evaluate April's table topic, please? Madam Table Topics Master and April, that was a classic example of how to answer a table topic for the guest tier, i.e. when you start off and you don't know what your answer you're going to give, you start skirting around the subject. So first of all, talk about the event and then talk about the possibilities, the small, the large, the what else did we have? All right. The, the, well, just the different types of possibility dogs that she could pick on. Well, she decided in her mind which one she was going to go for. And then she, toy dogs as well. That was another one. Working dogs. Working dogs. I mean, please. Do any of us have a working dog? And then she chose one. Oh, you do, Pam. Okay, excuse me. And then April chose something called a papillon. I have no idea what a papillon is, except it's French for butterfly. No idea, but I have a picture now in my mind of this dog sitting in a trophy. Of course, it could be a very large trophy, I don't know. Or it could be a very small trophy. But then, have you seen a chihuahua or little dogs like that? And it's, she told us that it has a personality, but it's smart. And uh, it, it just knew it had won and everything. I have to say Napoleon came to mind, you know, short man. Had to be had to be had to be out there had to, had to win and everything. I really enjoyed your table topic. You, as I say, went through the development of the speech. It was a whole speech there. It wasn't just a ramble. It was a structure. Coming up with some anticipation, which led to your answer. You looked at us. You kept the anticipation going, and uh, I. I just thought it was a great answer. No idea. I was going to go and look at what this papillon is now. Thank you, April. Thank you, Antonia. And the papillon's not much bigger than the chihuahua, just to give you an idea. Can we do one more table topic? We've got time for one more. Yeah, let's say, yeah, this is a controversial one. The thing is that Julian has prepared four of his. Okay. Questions. So can we cut that now? I will hand back to you then. Thanks, everyone, for taking part. Thank Thank you very much. Maybe people will have an opportunity in Julian's section. So thank you, everybody. And thank you very much, Madam Table Topic Master. Didn't she do well? And I hope you all enjoyed that. Thank you, Pam. And thank you, everybody who answered and evaluated. So moving on, Ampi has put the times of the, uh, the uh, Table Topic Responders in the chat. So we can move straight into the evaluation section. Our first evaluator is Kavita Dulai evaluating Moira O'Brien's speech, which I should have told you was engaging humour level one 
Introduction to Vocal Variety and Body Language. So Kavita, could you please give us your evaluation of Moira's speech? Thank you, Antonia. Thank you for that introduction. Um, and thank you very much, Moira. That was an excellent speech. Um, excellent in many ways. I, um, so to me, what I really liked about this speech was it gave me the insight into a dog's life. And you looked at everything from a perspective of a dog. And I, and I felt you did that so well. It, it, your understanding of dogs and the way they think and feel and smell and all that sort of thing came across really well in this speech, which I loved. And you started really strong. Um, I didn't realize it's from engaging humor, but it started with humor. And I always feel like if you start strong, it makes the speech so much easier for yourself it relaxes you and it relaxes the audience you 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 said something like I thought I could smell something and I wasn't sure which way the speech was going to go was it the human smelling the dog but then suddenly I realized it was the dog smelling everything around so that that was excellent and I also like the fact that you ended strong um when you took took us through this journey of what it's like to be a dog looking to everything from a dog's point of view, you suddenly realize, you ask that question, do you speak dog? Do you speak dog like the way I speak dog? Moira clearly does speak dog. That's what came across to me. And I also loved the middle part of this speech because there was, there was, it was, there was lots of humor all the way through, but I, what I really liked was the seamless transitions. You know, you went through the, the being a crossbreed and suddenly you went, to the dad who was a staff and, and the mother was from where somewhere else and then the the owner came in as well Moira which which I loved the way you seamlessly took us through I never felt lost through this um, speech I think this speech had a really great structure very cleverly written so thank you Moira thank you so much and I didn't realize this was about the voice because I had a comment about the voice without uh, Antonia even telling me about the voice. But what I really liked about it was your voice here. I felt your voice was strong. It was measured. There was pauses. And I felt you spoke from the diaphragm. You weren't talking from the chest or from the throat, which sometimes um, a lot of us are guilty of. So I love the fact that you actually spoke from the, from, from the gut, if you like. And there, there are a couple of recommendations because we want this speech to be even greater than it already is. My first recommendation is reduce the clutter in your background because I, I couldn't stop looking at the white door and the other things that were in the background because visually you looked brilliant. You know, I love the pink, the pink you were wearing. Everything was there. Just reduce the clutter so the focus is on you. And the other recommendation I was, I would say, is use the camera more because what I noticed was right at the end, you came in and said, do you speak dog? And all the way you were talking, I felt like you were talking one-to-one, -one, which I loved. I just felt like you could make, better use of coming right into the camera you know on on just to go back through your speech and look at where you could come forward where you want to speak to the audience more but in summary what I liked was this was a very strong speech in terms of structure I felt it was a very educational speech because I was felt I was educated on a dog's life that the smell and the the hearing is a lot stronger um, but this would be an even greater speech. Just take on those two recommendations, reduce the clutter, come into the camera more. And yes, I feel I'm speaking dog almost. <laughs> Thank you, Moira. Thank you, Kavita. And I've just realized that whoever put the agenda together asked a cat lover to evaluate a dog speech. So thank you for that little bit of humor. <laughs> And Kavita, can you just move to one side so that we can see Lord Alfred behind you, your lovely rescue dog? Thank you. OK, thank you for that. Our next evaluator is April, evaluating Rinku's not one, but two speeches for the price of one. Thank you, Madam Toastmaster. Fellow Toastmasters, and especially Rinku, this is my personal idea of how I thought Rinku did. First off, was she funny? Put your hands up if you thought she was funny. 
did she achieve her goals? I asked her in chat ahead of time, did she have any personal goals, her objectives for this speech? She said, to be able to add humor to an impromptu speech. Well, I tell you, it is really difficult to add humor to a prepared speech, much less an impromptu speech times two. She did really, really well. First off, her first speech about savings during the pandemic. I liked how she used questions right at the beginning. What is this? And she used dialogue. People love dialogue. When you have different people talking, it's much easier to go, my husband said this, or, or not actually, you don't want to say that. Or my son said that. You actually become the characters and then people are engaged. They can see those characters. Did you notice that her body language matched her words? She actually put the mask on her face and she told personal stories. People love personal stories. If you tell a personal story, you will have people engaged. A couple of recommendations. I'm a stand-up com stand comic. I get paid to do that. What you want to do is alert your audience that you are going to say something funny. You can also apply this to something important in an inspirational speech. For keywords and phrases, or when you're going to say something notable, pause. It alerts them, something important is going to come up, listen. As well, you want to pause after the punchline or after the keyword or phrase to let the audience digest what you said and laugh. The last thing you want to do is step on the laughter. I loved her beautiful, sassy smile. She has got quite a personality and it shone. Her second speech was about people in her life and that was hilarious. Imagine getting what you think is a nanny who is going to be cooking something that is not spicy and she has short-term memory loss and everything is spicy. That is funny. Again, personal story. Again, she did dialogue. I would have liked more engagement by questions and using you, we, and us, as well as using more of the time. She did a total of five and a half minutes. She had another minute and a half to go, but excellent voice and body language that matched, used the camera well, purposeful movements, loved the dialogue, and funny. Back to you, Madam Table Topic or Madam Toastmaster. Thank you very much, April. Now, in place of the Evaluator 3 open on your agenda, we have a little surprise for you. Julian has been busy behind the scene and he has prepared one of his famous pechacuchas. So over to you, Julian. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I think you all know what a pechacucha style presentation is. That's something like every 20 seconds, the slide changes. You will see the slides on my screen, like this. Let me show you what is the first slide. So you will see this. Every 20 seconds, that slide will change and another slide will come up. The idea is you, yes, you, to tell me an history, to tell me what's going on with these pictures. After the sixth picture, my face, my beautiful face, will show up and then you will have to wrap up and stop talking. Is that clear? I hope so. Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce you. Julian, for, for Amparo's sake, how long is each person? Don't worry, I will keep the, 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 the time. Amparo when has a few see, minutes off. When you see my face, you have to stop. You have to give one, two sentences and stop. Okay, so, ladies and gentlemen, the first person coming to this exercise is not other than Pam Rowley. Are you ready, Pam? Do you know how it works? I do. This is your favorite topic, so <laughs> in 20 seconds, I will change the uh, screen. We start 
No. Ah, so this is the famous Beagle. These are lovely dogs. These are formed in the hound group, but they're actually a dog trainer's nightmare because teaching this dog to come back when it's called is virtually impossible. They do what they were bred to do, and that is use their nose. So you take them on a walk, you let them off the lead, their nose goes down. There's no way of getting them back. But a Yorkshire Terrier, gorgeous little dogs, called a terrier but they're not from the terrier group they're from the toy group because of their size but do you know these dogs were actually bred to hunt and kill rats if you've got a yorkshire terrier don't have a squeaky toy as soon as they took the squeak out of the toy they lose interest and the famous doberman bred to be a guard dog and what a great job they do of guarding they love the family they make great pets but they don't like anyone coming into the house if you don't want a burglar alarm get a Doberman because believe you me no one will break in when this dog's around don't be fooled by that cute face and those tan eyebrows and then the famous Labrador everybody knows the Labrador again another gun dog from the gun dog group I think there was one on Crufts if anybody saw it that won through from its group gorgeous dog they used as sight dogs to help people with sight problems they're also used as hearing dogs they're used for everything and the chihuahua we mentioned the chihuahua before chihuahuas come in two types they come in the long coat which you see here and they also do a smooth coat the thing that's really important to know about the chihuahua is you can't pat them on top of the head because their skull never fuses it's always left with an open gap on the top so remember if you see a chihuahua tickle them under the chin don't pat them on the head your fingers will probably go through what a lovely picture this is is. So on the right, you've got the Yorkshire Terrier, on the left is the Corgi. Everybody knows the Corgi, the Queen has them. But there's two types of Corgis. This is the Pembrokeshire Corgi, but there's also the Welsh Corgi as well. It's hard to tell the difference between them. Okay, fantastic. Thank you very much, Pam. Those were few stories in one Pecha Cucha style question. The next one goes for OG. I don't think you have ever done this. Oh, are you ready? <laughs> We've got to do this. Let's do it. Three, two, one, go. Once upon a time in a faraway kingdom, there was a black and white cat. This cat was so curious that he was always peeping through the fence, wondering what is going on around the world. He would look and he would look and he would stay and he would stay and he would forget it. So one day, up came this cat, a white and brown cat. It jumped from a faraway kingdom and it arrived and it started looking at this black and white cat. It said, Why are you always staring? And the black and white cat said, well, to see what's happening on the other part of the world. And the brown cat said, you don't need to stare. You just walk around and you get to see everything. And as they decided to walk around, they met this black, white, and brown cat. And they say, hey, you fusion of our colors, how come you're neither black and white or black and brown? You three of our colors all together. He say, yeah, I achieved my colors by just sitting down lazy. And then they pet me and then I get these colors. And then guess what happened? <coughs> three of them saw a cat with the colors all modeled up. He said, what? Why do you look like this? <laughs> He's like, well, This is how I look. You have to do nothing in life and you achieve those beautiful colors all over. See, no stress, my guys. You lay on the chair and everything is going to be absolutely okay. And the four of them saw this one trotting by. What? Who are you? A big brown cat. You're so fed up. So, yeah, I eat a lot. And then what? So, yeah, you're lazy and you sit, but I'm lazy and I eat. And this is how I achieve my side. Brothers, All you have to do is wake up every day and eat. And there you are. Oh, my goodness. And then they saw all of them saw this big, big cat, the official big cat. And who are you? I'm the leopard, guys. What do you think? I get, you know, into movies. And when I'm black, they call me Black Panther. And at other times, I'm this beautiful things. And all the ladies want to wear me. Hey, Jillian, what did you do to me, man? Very well done, very well done, impressive, impressive. Absolutely wonderful. Thank you very much, Julian. If we have time, we'll come back for another one. We have to move on now to the Grammarian Report, please, from uh, Colette. Thank you, Madam Toastmaster. 
Um, I'd like to give you the Grammarian report for this evening, starting off with Pam Rowley, who gave us a quote that says that Kahoot doesn't prompt you to save. So that's one to remember. Myra O'Brien brought us on a trip talking of Newfoundland, Staffordshire and Yaho. And she used some enriching words in her speech, talking about how humans have a distinctive odour, according to dogs, and how that they dogs are expected to eat the same food every day. And they say that it's a dog, dog's life. We run, eat and sleep with one ear and one eye open. I really enjoyed that. Rink, who, who gave us a speech, two humorous speeches, used some great word pictures. The craziest one that I thought was that she can forget about her husband when he's not around and she still feels single. Whoops, I hope he doesn't watch digital communicators. <laughs> she also made me laugh when she talked about that, that she's an Indian, but they don't eat spicy foods. Oh my God, I can't believe that. That's so funny. Toastmaster of the day, Antonia, is so eloquent in her speech throughout the meeting and talks of backup plans. So let's move on quickly to table topics. And we had so many table topics, starting with Death Lusky, who talked of his aching muscles. And you might note that I, I reminded him about it in alliteration where he used the same letters of the word. We had cat dialect from a number of people, including Rinku, who went meow, and those who and gave us a great quote from her dad who said, those who receive get things, those who those who receive, they get things. Those who are givers sleep well. Lovely. Okay, I'll also use meow cat dialect. And she Julian talked about that he has holy like eyes. Well, Maura alluded to people not being fortunate living to Spain in her topic. And Pamela Benjamin gave us some emotion because what she said was she would love to be able to, to have the agility and passion as she described dogs running in zigzag. Now, finding good in Oak Hale, she said, make it all up when you're doing topics. And Bridget, who emphasized sustainability in her table topic when she talked of com the lack of confidence, but she actually mastered how to curl her, to fix her curly hair. Kumar would like to be a tiger, very relevant animal. And we got um, words about a papillon, which as our Toastmaster today, reminds us that papillon is the French for butterfly. Cavita used some fantastic adjectives in her, in her evaluation. She talked of insight, perspective, cleverly written speech, strong, measured, educational. And I would just finish up by Pam Rowdy, who is so knowledgeable about dogs, chihuahuas, labradors, types of corgis, Yorkshire terriers. Back to you, Madam Toastmaster. Thank you very much, Colette. What a wonderful report. Colette was certainly listening, wasn't she? Picked up everything. Fantastic. And now, Ampero, could we please have the times of the evaluators and Colette, because the grammarian is also an evaluator. Would you like to pop those in the chat for us so that we can move on? Thank you. And it's time now for our general evaluation from Pamela Benjamin, please. Good afternoon, good evening, digital communicators. As your general evaluator, I've been listening all afternoon. And I just want to say digital communicators has gone to the dogs today. Not only did they go to the dogs, but they were catty. That bunch was so catty, I can't even explain it. I had a really hard time finding any, any one point to grow on. This group is so hard to be a general evaluator on. I don't think I want to do this again. How can I improve? Mm. How about Julian? Do you think he could do his job better with on the fly with the pitchy goo? And I can't even say the name of the thing he does. Maybe I need to know how to say names better. I know that. Let me see. Could Pam Rowley have done better with the Kahoot? I don't think so. Let me see. 
Could our speakers have done better with their speeches? I don't think so. And then Pam Rowley. She came ready for her dog game, didn't she? And it was one dog after the next dog. And we were just in a whole nother level of dog love, weren't we? So I just, that's all I can say. Digital communicators went to the dogs. And then after that, they were very catty. Well done, my friends. Thank you very much. I think that gives us time to squeeze in one more picture kutcher if you want, Julian. All right. I would like to ask Moira if she's ready to do one of these drills. Moira, unmute yourself. Um, sure. Yeah, go sure. ahead. Exactly. Okay. Three, two, one, go. Woof, woof. Apparently, it's my birthday. I don't know what birthdays are because I'm a dog. And to me as a dog, of course, every day is pretty well the same. I wake up, I eat, I go for a run, I chase a ball, I snooze, I play. If I'm lucky, I get some friends to play with. And let's see if I can see. Oh, they're kittens. Oh, well, mm, we don't like cats very much. We do, we do sometimes allow them into our presence because, well, you know, we can't be nasty to other animals when they're in our own home. And of course, we love puppies. Puppies are always welcome because puppies love to play and I love to play. But I'm not so keen on little boys. Little boys can be a bit of a pain in the, you know what, posterior wise. But uh, they are generally speaking smaller than me. So, yeah, I get my own way. But of course, when a little child is reading to me, well, that can actually be a bit soothing. Oh, well, water. Now, because I am half Labrador, I love to swim and I am a very, very strong swimmer. So when I see water, it doesn't matter whether it's blue, green, yellow, pink or whatever, I dive straight in. But I'm not so good on ice because ice is slippery, sloppery, sloppery, and no, it's very difficult to keep my balance. And as for these nasty creatures, these so-called white, but yellow, oh dear, I seem to have lost my pictures. Well, there we are. We can't win them all. Thank you, Julian. Well done, Moira, well done. It's not easy. It's not easy. Some people make it very look very easy, but it's not easy at all. Thank you much, Antonio. Thank you very much, Julian. Well, I'm afraid we have come to the end of our meeting. I would like to thank very much my timekeeper, Amparo, Grammarian Colette, who's had to rush off to judge the contest, and everybody else, Table Topping Master Pam Rowley, General Evaluator Pamela Benjamin, the evaluators, the speakers, and I'm going to pass now in the absence of our president, the absence of our vice president of education. So the next person in line is the vice president of membership and that's Pam Rowley. So I'm going to pass the baton of the meeting over to Pam. Thank you, Antonio, and what a great job tonight. If I had my way, we'd do dogs at every meeting. So I just want to thank everyone for coming tonight. I hope you've enjoyed it. Before I get give you a couple of dates for your diary. I just want to speak to some of our first time guests tonight. So Kumar, thanks for joining us. How we found it tonight? Very interesting, I would say. Just to summarize, it's, it's been uh, what Moira articulated her stories. I really loved it. The storytelling within each one of you is so well developed. I think there is a lot of learnings personally for me to take in. Uh, we the meetings are structured. I liked it. This is my first meeting, to be honest to you, in Toastmaster. And I think 
this is a good journey for me and there is a lot of things which i need to develop uh, on the art of storytelling which i don't have at this point of time for sure i miss the tiger by 23 seconds itself that told the story hey that's great i didn't know it was your first ever meeting <laughs> and you it's your first time with us so i'm really impressed with your table topic uh, well done fine. But we will be having a breakout room at the end for guests if you want to join me for a couple of minutes. Just to sure, talk about sure. Membership. I'd love joining. Okay. And Rimshaw, would you like to say a quick hello? I know it's your first ever meeting. Hi, Rimshaw. Hi, hi. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Great. Yeah. How have you found tonight? Yeah, it's been great. It's um, it's really nice. I really like how it's structured. Just like Kumar said, it's uh, I'm basically here to mainly work on my public speaking skills. I think I really like public speaking skills and there is a bit of shyness and a lack of confidence and self-esteem. So I'm just here for that. But it was really nice to see everything. Well, that's why most of us are here. So you've come to the right place. And again, we will be having a breakout room. So join us in there for five minutes and we can have a chat. And April, I know you've joined us before, but how have you found tonight? Oh, great. I love shotgun evaluations. That's so much fun. And I really enjoyed the speeches. I enjoyed everything. I love Pecha Kucha. I've, I've seen it a couple of times done now. And I, I'd like to join your club. When I get a laptop that actually will let me do more than just watch, I can't nice. even do, I can't do virtual filters. I can't do virtual backgrounds. I can't, if I try to open a Word document or a, a PDF, it freezes. I need a new computer. So hey, once you I do don't that, need a new laptop to join us. You look great tonight. You look like you've got a virtual background on, so it looks really good. But again, if you want to join me in a breakout room in a couple of minutes, we can always have a chat about that. So keeping an eye on the time, as Nick always says, we start on time, we finish on time. So I have a couple of dates for your diary before I let you go. So our next meeting is the 28th of March, which will be our webinar contest. And we also have a date that I want you to think about, the 25th of April, where we're having an event for World Earth Day. Julian, do you want one minute just to say what the webinar contest is going to be about? And then maybe Kavita, a minute on World Earth Day. Let Kavita start. <laughs> Kavita, tell us a little bit more about World Earth Day. Can I just say as well, there will be a Kahoot style quiz for World Earth Day. So oh, World Earth Day, it's a just it's a themed event. It's a themed event on the just the climate change and sustainability. So we've got speakers um, coming from like all parts of the world, if you like, talking on different aspects. We have got people with speakers from this um, this club too. But the point of the event is really to um, to to start talking about sustainability everybody else is and I feel it's a subject that's not not really spoken about within Toastmasters very much and I feel we could all use the power of our voice of everything we learn in Toastmasters to go and speak about this very important topic this this topic comes up all, all the time it happens at work it can happen in any situation uh, I want people to feel confident enough to talk uh, to talk about this subject, you know, when we come across it at work or in any situation, I think th this is the right place to start building your skills in speaking about important topics like sustainability. So that's that's the point of it. So join us, and um, if you've got any contribution, that would be even better. Thank you. Sounds great, Kavita. So that's the twenty fifth of April, and you can sign up for any of our events and meetings via Eventbrite. Julian. All right. Next meeting is webinar contest. What is a webinar? As you know, Toastmasters International every year organize a contest. And over the last three years, this contest has been online because, you know, there's been a nasty virus around and we could not meet in venues, in physical venues. However, there was or there have been clubs for longer than that and these clubs have decided to organize a, a contest online that's what they call webinar contest however the rules of this contest is how do we engage with the audience online so be ready to get really good speakers 
uh, I'm one of those, okay, sorry, um, and, and to be engaged. The idea is whoever wins this contest will go to a virtual Toastmasters conference where we will be displaying our good skills on camera in front of the whole world. And we will compete in against other winners from other online clubs to see who produces the most engaging and interesting webinar. And I can see that Moira will maybe be interested in taking part on the contest. Moira, <coughs> you can still join. If you pay this week, by the following week, you can enter in the contest. There are still a couple of spots available. Ah, well, Julian, I would love to, but I'm already a member of two clubs and being a poor, impoverished pensioner, I'm not sure I can afford it though. <laughs> oh, I say go for the hat trick, Moira, go for the hat trick. So it's eight o'clock, that's our meeting officially closed. Thank you everyone for coming. Thanks to our Toastmaster of the Day, Antonia, for a great job. Guests, please stay on just for a couple of minutes if you want to have a chat about membership. And I shall look forward to seeing you all at the next meeting for our webinar contest. See you next time. Julian, don't close the meeting, will you? I'm going to have a no, chat. No, no, no. I won't close the meeting. If you want to talk about what you thought I'm about I'm going to turn the off the live. I'm going to turn off the recording. And oh. thank you all for playing along with your cats and dogs. Sorry. What I was saying, if you want to uh, keep the conversation going here, yes, please do it here. Um, I will be listening. While okay. Can you, can you stop the YouTube, the live, Julian?